Although today most of you recognize me from television as the co-host of Deaf Mosaic, it was on the stage where I really got my start. And theater is still very close to my heart. Twenty-seven years ago, I was a founding member of a professional company that uniquely featured deaf actors in adaptations of Chekhov, Voltaire, and Moliere, among others. It was a new beginning. A new beginning for me, for avid theater goers, and for the National Theater of the Deaf. Gail Eastman. And I'm Mary Lou Novitsky. Welcome to Deaf Mosaic and a tribute to our national treasure, the National Theater of the Deaf. The NTD. Their first national tour was in 1967, and it was soul stirring for me and a professional ensemble of deaf and hearing actors to introduce this new style of theater. Seeing words in American Sign Language as they were spoken in English captivated both deaf and hearing audiences and pioneered the way for future companies who followed the model of the National Theatre of the Deaf. Today, the National Theatre of the Deaf has given over 6,000 performances on six continents, showcased 156 actors, and has been honored with a prestigious Tony Award for theatrical excellence. This matchless record and recognition has inspired the NTD to expand their productions and to expand their staff. Hoping to bring theater to an even wider audience, the NTD looks forward to a new beginning and new energy rooted firmly in its stellar past. The NTD's production of Dylan Thomas's Songs from Milk Wood delighted audiences 25 years ago, and a generation later, the NTD presents Under Milk Wood, a revival of Thomas's poetic vision of a village in Wales. <laughs> Matthew. Oh, give us a kiss, Matthew Richards. Give us a penny, Oh, I only got paid for leave. This is a penny. Will you take this woman, Matthew Richards? Dulcie Crawford, Epi Pepper, the Wilbur Glue Pot, Mrs. Carter, Blood Witch Power, Mr. Awful Wedded Wife. No! Nestled in the rolling hills of the Connecticut River Valley, the NTD has settled in the village of Chester. Taking up residence just steps from Chester's main street, the NTD has given new life to an old mill and its surrounding buildings. Throughout its years, the NTD has spotlighted the talents of many and has especially encouraged young performers with promising skill. Former members of the company are now accomplished stage, screen, and television actors who often credit their professional achievement to the NTD. Members of the NTD Ensemble also tour with the Little Theatre of the Deaf, LTD, entertaining young people and their families worldwide. And each summer, the NTD offers the only professional theatre training program for deaf people in America, the Professional Theatre School. Camille Jeter, an alumna of the Professional Theatre School, is the NTD's artistic director. Nothing else at all. Oh, but a doubt said. The National Theatre of the Deaf is unique in its own way. 
It's just like a family, providing intensive training, and we develop relationships with all of the people who work with us. The directors, the writers, the sign language consultants, and the actors all work together so that we become a family, an ensemble, and we tour together. So that is a unique aspect of this company. This is my last tour with the company. Since I became artistic director, I have been juggling three different roles that I have to play. I don't mean play, but do. As artistic director, I have to focus on creative development. I also have to focus on the professional theater school, and I'm also acting. Those are the three roles I'm juggling this year. The National Theater of the Deaf doesn't have a stage of its own. It's a professional touring company and also offers workshops, residencies, and arts and education programs. Meals and snacks are provided by the company to sustain the actors through long rehearsal days. This is the last hearing actor we have here. <laughs> <laughs> Veteran actor Andy Vaznik was a teacher of English literature when he became a founding member of the NTD. I enjoy it. It's really hard to avoid the theater. I just don't know how to say no. I don't know if it's in my blood. That's a good question. I don't know. I know many people who love theater and crave acting. But for me, although I enjoy doing good work, I'm not sure I have that strong desire to act. I've also worked for hearing theater companies, such as the Cleveland Playhouse, for two or three months. And then I was with the Milwaukee Repertory, and I went with them to Siberia last year. I enjoy all of these different experiences, and I like theater. Missy Keast was introduced to the NTD as a child at an NTD workshop for young actors in Arizona. Her dream of joining the company came true this year. Oh, I struggled. I met with a lot of conflicts. Experienced actors always put me to the test. They had to see if I could do it, if I could work hard enough, if I would see acting from the inside. I had to get the taste of what acting is all about. I never had to wait long for them to challenge me. They challenged me to be creative, to learn as we went along, to memorize the lines, and to act well. Oh, and there's lots of emotion involved, too. It's not just work, but there are emotions involved. It's all encompassing. But from those experienced actors, I've learned so much, and I appreciate it. I'm excited. My bags are packed, and I'm going on the road now for nine weeks. Everyone picks a number uh, during the meeting. Whoever gets number one and is the lucky one, they get to pick their seat first. So we have a chart, and whoever number one, they get up, they go up, I want that seat. And so we will initial down, and then we go all the way through. 13 or 14, depending on how many people we have on the to sit back to. Bye. I've got to go pack more things. Love you. Take care of the cats for nine weeks.
Have a happy birthday tomorrow. <laughs> These performers are my teachers and my personal friends. I think I've even lost sight of the fact that they're performing. Because my, my job has nothing to do with the stage, only, only to do with uh, transport, transporting people and safely bringing them from show to show. He always enjoys his music. Brian's first travel day. And how are you, how are you getting along? Oh, just, just fine. You need? fine. You know, just fine. 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 The National Theater of the Deaf will cross 16 states and 26 stages during this tour of Under Milkwood. First stop is Williams College in Williamstown, Massachusetts. All right, help you? Yeah, six hours, please. Yes. Ready? Six hours, please. I'm okay now, but as curtain approaches, I get a little nervous. And then I forgot something. <laughs> That's why I'm over here cleaning this. So I'm going to do this, 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 this. Okay, finish. Finish makeup. Finish costumes. Do I have the right size hat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like to have about 15 minutes of quiet time to think things over before I leave here. I like it quiet so I can think and get into character for the show. Right before the show, I always go up to Frank, one of the actors, and we do the blessing. Then we can go on. Um, only thinking about 8 o'clock, starting it. I don't really get nervous before a show. I'm sort of nervous the night before, but now as we're approaching the curtain. To mark the play's 40th anniversary, the ensemble introduces the playwright to the audience. A spinning man, a small gift from the National Theatre of the Deaf. In celebration of our 25-year love affair with Dylan Thomas. A new dawn and on to a new town. The company drives seven hours and 395 miles to their next destination, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Prior to the evening performance at Gettysburg College, the NTD actors teach a visual theater and creative drama workshop to the students and run through a quick rehearsal to adjust to tonight's stage. Ten minutes, ten minutes. Thank <laughs> you. 
village of Chester has no traffic lights, no parking meters, and just a sprinkling of stores. But it does have the lunchbox, a favorite haunt for the NTD actors and staff. Matt Wilson has been an actor with the NTD for nine years, but last year he changed roles to launch the company's outreach program, offering free workshops and demonstrations throughout the United States. The way in which we reach out to the deaf community, first of all, involves having two people on a team, one deaf and one hearing, to do the advance work, meaning going in ahead of the rest of us. If we're to give a performance in a particular town, my team arrives two weeks early to meet the deaf people and let them know that the NTD will be there. They give presentations to explain what the NTD is all about. They really develop close communication, person-to-person -person contact, which is best for the deaf community, better than sending papers or putting advertisements in the newspaper. But that does not guarantee attendance. Personal communication results in more commitment to actually see the play and with better comprehension. Other countries do not have strong theater programs like the NTD. We want to do outreach to show them what we have so that they can establish their own organizations. Some have already been established. But when the NTD goes to other countries, the emphasis is on presenting NTD, and we don't really have direct contact with the deaf community. I want to be able to reach out to the international deaf community and talk to them directly. The reason that deaf people haven't attended performances, particularly those of the NTD, is based on history, and it also depends on what the play is about. In the past, we have given plays that were very abstract and which overwhelmed the deaf audience. That is understandable because most of them are without a theater background, which means it isn't their fault. The school and educational systems have not given enough support to acting or to the arts. So we have to understand their needs and provide information. That means we work with children because they are our future audience. We have to provide more theater workshops for children. I want the NTD to come again. I'm eager to talk and learn from them. I have to prepare first, but what I'm learning now about signs and words can be used later on for my acting. It's very hard to learn, but I really enjoy acting. The NTD has touched and affected the lives of thousands of deaf people worldwide. And it has also touched and affected the lives of a few much closer to home. Over the hills and far away. The staff and the actors here are my teachers about theater, literature, stories, names of books, famous authors, backstage and on the stage, and about the acting profession, finding the essence of acting from within and bringing it out, and about how to get involved in the stories. I'm overwhelmed. It is a growing process. I thought I had finished growing, but there is more growing to do. Acting has to come from the inside. Never been kissed. Oh, oh. Going young. The NTD is growing and expanding. In the future, we will be focusing more on TV, variations of the LTD, and on more specialty programs targeted to the deaf audience in schools and communities. So we are looking for money and time and the right people. We are growing. Still growing after 27 years. It's me in Moose Dog Lane, Billy. Oh, give me a penny, it's silly. Wendy, <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, I kiss you in Moose Dog Lane. Now I haven't got to give you a penny. <laughs> Here at the NTD, we are having what I call a year of rebirth. A new beginning. And we are expanding the company and increasing the staff. We work very hard. We keep our vision in the forefront and continue to develop new ideas and projects. 
I would like us to develop the Deaf Theater Conference. It would be a national and worldwide conference known as the DTC. And I'd like to see the development of a regional theater company here. We're progressing. I enjoyed coming and seeing what this is like. It's the deaf world. It was great. It was very interesting and very good. It's important to have deaf theater to show everyone that hearing and deaf people have the same feelings. We're the same, except that we receive through our eyes and others with their ears. It was good. There was a lot of poetry and a great deal of action to see on stage. It was very good. From where you are, you can hear their dreams. At Milkwood, the suddenly wind-shaken wood springs awake for the second dark time this one spring day. This show brought back so many wonderful memories of the National Theatre of the Deaf, as I'm sure it did for the other old-timers and not-so-old actors watching today. I also have wonderful memories of the NTD. Although I've never acted, I've always enjoyed being entertained by the National Theatre of the Deaf's performances, and I look forward to seeing each new production. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, when Deaf Mosaic brings you more stories from around our world, I'm Gil Eastman. And I'm Mary Lou Nowitzki. So, so long. long. When an individual chooses a life in the theater, it is sometimes limited to intense, short-term work in front of the footlights. At the NTD, however, the actors and other creative artists become part of a family whose life stretches well beyond an individual production. The NTD Ensemble travels throughout the world as performers, ambassadors, advocates, teachers, and friends. The NTD meets children when they visit schools to perform or teach, and they meet their parents and other community members when they present outreach events all across the United States. If you would like more information about the NTD, please write or call the National Theater of the Deaf, Post Office Box 659, Chester, Connecticut, 06412, Voice 203-526-4917, TTY 203-526-4974.